It's the show. Okay. It's Easter! Happy Easter! I haven't got any Easter eggs, but here's Finn from Adventure Time. Look at him. I am a responsible adult with self-control. The first computer my family ever got was a 286. Nothing fancy, but even that could run a few games. Hugo, Nibbles, Gorillas, Teen Agent, it ran some really fancy stuff, but the majority of the games that I played were text adventures. I spent hours navigating worlds illuminated through words alone, with only my imagination and countless notebooks to guide me. Today's game is kind of a spiritual successor to the text adventures of old, a blend of past and present that is somehow more than the sum of its parts. Let's look at Stories Untold. Released on the 28th of February by No Code and Devolver Digital, Stories Untold is a four chapter anthology of games that blend traditional text adventures with environmental puzzles and a feeling of utter dread. The atmosphere in these stories is fantastic, providing a wide range of fear based emotions, leaving you with a knot in your gut without resorting to tactics like jump scares or gore. The music, the set dressing, the voice acting, everything comes together beautifully to ensure that these four stories are one nightmare you want to see through to its end. The accessibility options for Stories Untold are reasonably good, although where they fall they tend to fall hard. The game gives the option to fully customise the controls you use during play in an interface that loads before the game launches, which has the added benefit of making said controls clear before gameplay begins. There's seemingly no support for alternate controllers though, which makes sense on the surface as typing is a large part of the game, however this could have been overcome through the use of a soft keyboard overlay. As you load up Stories Untold, you're greeted with a photosensitive epilepsy warning, and knowing what this is referring to, I'm really glad that they included that warning. There is a section with extremely fast flashes of alternating red and blue, with no way to disable or lessen the effect of this in the options. It really is a shame, but those with photosensitive epilepsy will want to steer clear of, at the very least, chapters 2 and 4, a full half of the game. Last, but certainly not least, is the fact that while Stories Untold does have subtitles, which is great, it doesn't have captions. And there's a big difference in how these play out accessibility-wise here. The subtitles present are enough to give you the story. They'll tell you what people are saying, but that's it. They don't describe the sound effects that are important for building the tension that makes this game such a great entry in the horror genre, but more importantly, they also don't describe the clues necessary to solve certain audio puzzles. So if a player has a hearing impairment, they're not going to be able to finish chapters 3 or 4, again, a full half of the game. Now, fixing some of these problems is a lot of effort, but if no code can only fix one thing, I'd suggest upgrading from subtitles to captions, or at least giving some visual representation of essential information. Having said all of that, Stories Untold is hella engaging, like, I really don't like horror, I don't like the feeling of being scared in the slightest, but I couldn't stop playing. I needed to know how each story progressed, and as you play through, you'll understand why too. Stories Untold is $10 on Steam, and if you're still up in the air on whether you want it, Chapter 1, The House Abandoned, is available free as a demo. And if you do like mystery, suspense, and a more psychological horror feel from your games, and you're a fan of the old school, you're really going to want to play it. I just got out of the dentist and I can't feel, like, half my face. It's all puffy and everything, look at that. You're doing a really good It's a perfect day. It's really, really lovely and it's nice to... Get your... Hey, my name is Bron, and I'm here testing out a new segment for the show which we decided to call Info Dump. It's going to be my job to take a seed topic and give you as much information sprouting off that seed topic as I possibly can, by just allowing my train of thought to like, go where it will. Today's seed topic is Easter because it's like, um, topical? 
A lot of people think they know where the name Easter comes from, but the true answer to that question is something that we actually don't know for sure. The most prevalent theory is that it comes from the early Germanic Aostromonath, or the month of Aostra, which is equivalent to April and potentially named after the Proto-Germanic goddess, also called Aostra. The only issue here is that the only real reference to Aostra that we have is attributed to 8th century author Bede, meaning that there's no firm evidence for Aostra's existence. Now, while Germanic neo-pagans associate Aostra with the spring or renewal, there's no actual definitions for what her domain included, so the connection between her and the Easter traditions of rabbits and eggs is somewhat shaky. Having said that, in Saxon and Britain areas, there were early traditions relating to hares, and Aphrodite and Venus were both associated with not only hares, but also procreation and rebirth, all very early spring things. So. The Easter bunnies are actually probably more like the March hares. Easter eggs, on the other hand, are a different beast. Because although a lot of people believe that eggs are tied intrinsically to the worship of Aostra, there is no reputable historical evidence that eggs have anything to do with that at all. But where they might come from is the 2,500 year old Iranian holiday, now Ruz, which marks the beginning of spring and the new year in the Persian calendar, which uses painted eggs in its celebration. Of course, it might also tie back to the hares mentioned earlier, due to how easy it is to confuse a hare form, where they raise their young, to a plover's nest, meaning that basically, people thought hares laid eggs. But really, people have been painting and decorating eggs to mark the beginning of spring for over 60,000 years throughout Africa. Back on the topic of Easter slash Aostra for a moment, a lot of people believe that because Aostra is, at least in neo-pagan tradition, associated with birth and procreation and all of that, she's also the root of the word estrogen. But actually, estrogen comes from the root estrus, a noun referring to an ovulating animal's readiness to procreate, which in turn was borrowed from the same word in Latin, estrus, which translates directly to gadfly? Gadflies, or botflies as they're more commonly known, are vicious parasites, and will even parasitize humans if given the chance, but humans have historically got their own back, at least by the Inuit people of Nanavut in Canada, who have historically eaten botfly larvae. Apparently, they taste like milk. That got pretty off track at the end there, but you know what, I think I like that. The next time you see me, I really can't guarantee that I'm going to stay on topic much at all. Oh, oh, oh no, I, I, I have a brilliant idea. Okay, um, I'm going to work on this, and you'll be seeing me again in the future. Um, like, so later dudes. Hey guys, I'm Finn, and I can't do my own voice at the moment. What is wrong with your throat? I don't know.